Hey everybody, it's Jeff, and uh, here's what I did over the past few days over the weekend uh, for Workbench, where I stream my open source innovation work on Twitch. I've been pushing forward on the uh, port of Dan's Photoshop-like UI uh, prototype um, to my web stack, web UI stack and Go. Um, I reached the most complex part of the code, um, which is basically doing these um, dynamic panels um, that kind of push each other around um, and have different properties depending on what's in them. Um, luckily, uh, Dan kind of split that out as a separate project, so it had some very um, simple kind of standalone examples that I could use. Um, so I took uh, one of those and used that as my um, sort of target uh, example to get working. Um, it, <laughs> it took a while. I mostly ported it without really knowing how it all worked. Um, it, it was a little hard to follow um, when you get into some of the, the math of what it was doing. Um, I get the general idea, but I had to focus more on figuring out um, what all the types were um, and what properties uh, components had, since all of that stuff is very um, implicit uh, here in JavaScript. Uh, you can explicitly define properties, um, but he didn't happen to. Um, and uh, yeah, there was a lot to, to kind of go through just to get the basic types. Um, and porting the actual algorithms and stuff was actually um, straightforward, just kind of going bit by bit, figuring out uh, what that part was doing, not necessarily understanding it, but just seeing what it was doing and what it was um, uh, you know, working on and manipulating, and then doing the Go uh, equivalent of that, um, which I guess, for example, this would be that equivalent. And so this was oftentimes um, a little bit more more readable, um, being an idi idiomatic Go. But I also figured Dan didn't spend much time cleaning up um, parts of his code. Um, so I finally finished writing all the code for um, the two basic things. I call it a panel wrapper since he has two things called panel and the panel group, which is where a lot of the magic happens. Um, and then from there, I could just work out any of my any of the inconsistencies in my understanding of types from compiler error. So I just made everything um, properly compile, and that was a good pass. Um, I ended up having to patch Vecti um, because um, it's picky about re-rendering things that it's rendered before and since these children are defined by the parent and the parents not being re-rendered, the the children, when you re-render uh, an element, are going to be something that has already been re-rendered because it was not re-rendering the parent. I guess you could re-render the parent or something. I don't know. Um, kind of an open question. I opened an issue in, in Vecti4, um, but it mostly just had an assertion where it would panic if... Um, you know, a certain case would be true. It didn't really seem like it was necessary, so I commented it out for now um, in the Vecti code. And hopefully I'll figure out what's going on. So finally I could get uh, the demo page to render um, without any errors uh, in the browser. I had to kind of go through and fix uh, errors that were happening. I don't know what this one is all about. I mean, the the, the two numbers are roughly similar, but it could just be a math thing that I got wrong. Um, so the question is, does this work? Um, in this demo, you can kind of move everything around and it does the right thing. Um, in mine, not so much. Um, it does something, but it's terribly unresponsive 
and sort of disproportionate to my actual input. Um, so I mostly, most likely made some mistakes uh, in, in implementing the algorithms. And I, I already caught a few mistakes during the first pass of just porting it without running it. Um, so I'm sure there's more. But the unresponsiveness made me curious about how uh, WebAssembly for Interaction Animations um, performs um, like that sliding interaction because uh, here it's very smooth, right? And uh, so I was concerned because I know that um, uh, calling in and out of WebAssembly is slower, um, but is it really this bad? So I made a separate component um, to kind of test this out. Um, dragger. What is this prototype called dockable? So uh, here we have a simple drag and drop kind of thing. And initially, I was like, oh, this is great. Um, this actually works out pretty well. I think it is a little less, and, and it coming off is just because I don't do uh, events on the whole document like you may, probably should do when you're doing drag and drop. So if the mouse exits the div, um, I drop it. But um, you can kind of see the mouse, uh, you know, it's not always centered. So, uh, and, and the smoothness, I think, isn't what I would expect. Like, I think it would be a little bit smoother in, in JavaScript. But what this tells me is that it's not terrible. In, in the best case scenario, it's, it's usable. Um, I don't think it's as smooth as native JavaScript. Um, and I read Firefox was a little ahead in speeding up those calls, and so I tried it there, there and it does seem like it's a little bit smoother than Chrome here. Um, both browsers will eventually have it much faster, and for now, this is tolerable. And so what it does is gives me a baseline for how, it, how well it should behave, and um, it's uh, clearly not there yet. Um, but I think... You know, this tells me it's just debugging. I think it's mostly the math and maybe some uh, inefficient calls or something somewhere. So anyway, that's it for now. Let me know if you have any thoughts or questions in the comments and subscribe uh, to my channel if you'd like to start following along um, or join me live on Twitch Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.